Ahead of the delivery event this week, Cybertrucks are on display at at least 15 Tesla showrooms throughout the USA and a mechanical engineer who is also, by the way, a sculptor, recently reacted to the design of the Cybertruck and pointed out some important design features that most people have missed. It appears like the Tesla Cybertruck design isn't as simple as it may look like, and this finished design should be extremely aerodynamic. Also make sure that you stick around to the end of the video because a Tesla showroom manager recently shared the battery size of the Cybertruck and I'd like to discuss that as well and my uh, estimates for the range of the Cybertruck. So without further ado, let's dive in. I'm John and this is Clean Your Watt. According to this X.com post by Electrek, there are at least 15 Tesla showrooms across the USA with a Cybertruck on display. I will put a complete list of these showrooms in the uh, video comments down below if you'd like to um, actually see if there's one in your area. But do be aware that many of these showrooms have been quite busy as people have been lining up to see the Cybertruck. While the Tesla Cybertruck design is quite planar, in general, and it has very straight, flat lines. Upon a closer inspection, you can actually see some subtle curves in the truck's design, as pointed out by David Kassman in this X.com thread. With that being said, regarding the Tesla Cybertruck design, in this first part of the post, David wrote, quote, it's a far more complex and sophisticated design than one may suspect from online images. Perhaps that's why you have to see it in real life before drawing conclusions. Unfortunately, I personally haven't been able to see the Cybertruck in person, but um, those like David who have seen it in person seem to kind of echo the fact that the Cybertruck is even more impressive in person than it is in images. Just being able to get um, a close up of not only the design itself, but the scale of the Cybertruck um, really puts it in perspective. And obviously the Cybertruck has been popular despite kind of a polarizing design, but the design is not quite as simple as a first glance um, may reveal. For example, when it comes to the side of the Cybertruck, it may look like the panels are pretty flat, but they actually have a little bit of a subtle curve. And as David points out here, quote, the sides of the Cybertruck are not straight along the belt line crease, rather the front quarter panel the two door panels and the rear quarter panel form a four segment curve. It looks like this kind of subtle curve that the Tesla design team worked into the Tesla Cybertruck design is something referred to as entesis, which is apparently a design cue used to design cylindrical columns um, to give them the proper appearance and also probably to add to the strength of the columns as well. As David points out, these subtle curves not only make the Cybertruck design look a little bit better, but it should improve the aerodynamics and also the strength of the Cybertruck. Beyond the subtle curves worked into the side panels of the Cybertruck, David also pointed out the fact that the front of the Cybertruck actually has some curvature as well. As you can see, the front bumper of the Cybertruck actually has a nice curve built into it, and the stainless steel panel above that has a nice curve as well. In addition, while you might expect that the Cybertruck front hood would be very flat, as David points out here, it actually has a little bit of a curvature to it, and it's shaped more like a fingernail. Once again, these design cues are very important when it comes to aerodynamics, which I'll talk more about shortly. Beyond that, David also points out that the front windshield has a nice curvature to it as well. And this will keep the Cybertruck front windshield from acting like a um, signaling mirror, flashing light in a weird way. Um, it also helps once again with aerodynamics and it will make it stronger as well. David also points out that the side windows of the Cybertruck have a curvature built into them. And even the top glass roof panel has a curvature built into it as well, but not just a simple curve, but a compound curve. Regarding this, David wrote, those all appear to be simple curves. In fact, all of the stainless steel is either flat or simple curves. We expected this because forming the thick ultra hard metal into a compound curve would be extremely difficult. That said, the glass roof appears to have a subtle compound curve. This makes it much stronger, more aerodynamic, and it even provides a little more interior volume. 
David then summarized his observations by writing, quote, Anyway, those are just a few of my shape observations about the vehicle. The bottom line is that it's a lot more sophisticated and robust looking than it appears in photos, primarily due to all the subtle convex curvature. To paraphrase Michelangelo, a good sculpture should be able to roll down a hill without breaking. It's a very impressive piece of design work, and I can see why producing it is a challenge. Beyond those observations, I also wanted to go ahead and quickly cover a reply that David made to Lauren Carmichael specifically regarding the windshield wiper of the Cybertruck and the fact that it doesn't appear like there's really much of a gap between the elevation of the windshield and the front hood, like with normal vehicles where the windshield wipers tuck in under the hood. Of course, the Cybertruck front wiper does not go down and hide. It actually stays in the side of the windshield. Regarding this, David replied, quote, there actually is a difference. The hood is about one centimeter proud of the windshield along the entire edge where the two meet. There's not nearly enough space to tuck away wipers, however. The mono wiper isn't a bad solution in some ways. I imagine it's pretty aerodynamic too. Regarding the fact that the elevation gap between the front hood and the windshield is very small, I think this very well might be an aerodynamic choice here from Tesla because they're trying to make this truck as aerodynamic as possible. I'm not a vehicle designer and I'm not an expert on aerodynamics. So if you're watching this video and um, you have some insight on this, let me know. Do you think that the elevation difference between the hood and the windshield being very small actually helps with the aerodynamics of the vehicle? From my personal uh, viewpoint, once again, not expert, but um, from my observation, it appears like that would add to the aerodynamics of the vehicle and that the mono wiper, the big mono wiper to the side, very likely comes down to an aerodynamic choice. Now, with that being said, I wanna talk more about the aerodynamics of the Cybertruck and also um, how much range I think the first version of the Cybertruck will have. And specifically, I wanna talk about the battery size of the Cybertruck because Drew, who runs the YouTube channel Telosive EV, recently visited a Tesla showroom and the manager shared that the battery size was 123 kilowatts for the truck that was on display, which according to the VIN number appears to be a dual motor version of the truck. As Drew made clear, this comment from that manager may be accurate or not, but it appears like this number is right and 123 kilowatt hours for the Cybertruck battery pack size, at least initially, seems about right for me when it comes to the energy density of the 4680 batteries, the cyber cells, and specifically when you kind of go back to something that was in Tesla's master plan part three. In this table illustrating the various segments of vehicles, Tesla lumped the Model S, X, and Cybertruck together here and gave an example pack size of 100 kilowatt hours. Obviously, Tesla was not saying here that the Cybertruck battery pack would be exactly 100 kilowatt hours, but I believe this is emphasizing the fact that the Cybertruck is not going to have a massive battery like uh, 200 kilowatt hours, like the, uh, for instance, GMC Hummer, for example. With that being said, will a 123 kilowatt hour battery pack be large enough for the Tesla Cybertruck to have over 300 miles of EPA rated range. If the Cybertruck does indeed have a 123 kilowatt hour battery pack, I personally still believe that it can have over 300 miles of range for several reasons. First of all, because the Cybertruck design, as I've been discussing, should be extremely aerodynamic. Previously, back in 2019, Elon Musk tweeted a response to interesting engineering, specifically talking about the aerodynamics of the Cybertruck and wrote, quote, with extreme effort, Cybertruck might hit a 0.30 drag coefficient, which would be insane for a truck, requires tweaking many small details. Elon then added, overall shape is good for low drag coefficient, matters a lot exactly how you trip airflow at edges and guide air around wheels like an invisible sculpture. So all the subtle curves that Tesla worked into the design of the Cybertruck, as David pointed out in that great x.com thread, should help with the aerodynamics. And I personally believe that the Cybertruck coefficient of drag could be very well lower than 0.30. Specifically, I believe this because the Rivian R1T's coefficient of drag is 0.30. And the Cybertruck looks like it will be a more aerodynamic design than the Rivian R1T. So I believe the Cybertruck having a lower coefficient of drag than the Rivian R1T does seem to make sense. 
Beyond that, Tesla has been able to engineer some extremely efficient powertrains. And when you look at a vehicle like, for instance, a Tesla Semi, that vehicle is extremely efficient and the powertrain is designed in such a way that when cruising down the highway, two of the motors are able to disengage and allow the vehicle to only use one of the three motors while driving down the freeway. This of course makes the truck a lot more efficient when the extra torque and power is not needed. I believe it's very possible that the Tesla Cybertruck powertrain could also have a feature built in where one of the motors, even with a dual motor powertrain, disengages while cruising down the highway to increase the vehicle's range. So when you combine the fact that the Tesla Cybertruck should be extremely aerodynamic with the fact that Tesla designs very efficient powertrains, I believe despite the Tesla Cybertruck battery pack size being smaller than some of the competitors' trucks that have over 300 miles of range, I believe Tesla can still do this with a 123 kilowatt hour battery pack. I think the Tesla Cybertruck range will be somewhere a little bit over 300 miles. I hope it's 350 miles of range, but it's very possible it'll be like 320 or something like that. However, do note that real world range of the Tesla Cybertruck will very likely be uh, quite a bit less than that. And I believe real world range of the Cybertruck when driving around could be somewhere closer to 250, um, 280, something like that. With that being said, as Tesla is able to improve the energy density of their 4680 batteries, I definitely still believe that in the future, a 500 mile range Tesla Cybertruck will be something that Tesla offers. But I just don't believe that Tesla is able to do that very efficiently right now with the current energy densities of the 4680 batteries. Maybe their third or fourth generation of 4680 batteries will have that energy density, but right now it appears like um, a little bit over 300 miles of range with 4680 batteries is going to be a realistic number. With that being said, if you currently have a reservation for a Cybertruck, is an EPA rated range of just a little bit over 300 miles sufficient? Would that be enough for you? Let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.